I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the winged scourge that pecks at your nightmare. I am Dark Winged Duck. Hello everybody, I'm Jay Toast and welcome to Video Game Corner. Today I'm going to be reviewing the game Darkwing Duck for the Nintendo Entertainment System, made by the great Capcom. When I was a kid, I watched a lot of Darkwing Duck after school, and I loved that show. But I'll be honest, I didn't know up until about a year ago that there was a Darkwing Duck game for the, for the NES. But, um, I have got my hands on it, and I'll tell you what, it is a great addition to my collection. So, without further ado, Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck was a Disney cartoon that ran in 1991 to 1992. The main character was Darkwing Duck, who was a Batman type of character. He was voiced by the very talented voice actor Jim Cummings. The cool thing about Jim Cummings is that he also did the voice of Winnie the Pooh, and he played the voice of the Terror Mask in the Splatterhouse remake in 2010. He also calls sick kids in the hospital and talks to them in the voice of Winnie the Pooh. What a really cool guy. Darkwing Duck is one of those instances where a TV show or a movie is actually makes a pretty good game. Most of the time, video games made from TV shows or movies aren't very good. A lot of people believe that Darkwing Duck being so good was the fact that Capcom was responsible for it. Capcom made a lot of really great Disney games back in the 80s and the early 90s, so... I believe, I, I agree with everybody, I think that is the reason why. Other companies may not do as well, except maybe for Sunsoft, when they made the Batman game, but you know, how many other games? LJN sure wouldn't have done that. LJN made a lot of crap. This game is a lot like Mega Man. It actually uses a tweaked out version of the Mega Man 5 engine. It starts with Launchpad McQuack asking you which area you would like to start in. It has an option of choosing three different areas to play. After you beat these three areas, then you have three more areas to choose from. This game was ported to the Nintendo Game Boy, and it also has an unlicensed version for the handheld Game King called Duckman. There's a TurboGrafx-16 version of the game, but it's a lot different than the NES version. The gameplay in this game works for the most part, but the one thing I have trouble with is grabbing onto hooks. Sometimes I even miss, even though it seems I'm doing the same thing with the controls as, I, as the last hook I grabbed. I will say this on the parts where you have to grab other objects that aren't hooks, the grab mechanic works perfect. It's just in those areas where you have to be precise. Some of the good things about the gameplay is that Darkwing can use his cape and deflect enemy projectiles. It's also an awesome feature to have a shield. The jumping feels right also. You get different weapons throughout the game and you can switch them out as you play. This is where the Mega Man 5 engine comes in handy. I like the fact that even though they used the Mega Man 5 engine, they didn't make a Mega Man 5 clone. Sure, it has a lot of similarities to Mega Man, but it's not Mega Man. The game is Darkwing Duck, and it feels like Darkwing Duck. The game isn't easy at all, which is really strange because back in the um, 80s, the target audience for Nintendo games were kids. And granted, kids back in the 80s and the 90s were a lot tougher than the kids today as far as uh, being able to beat harder games. That's just what we had. Um, the fact is that Little Mermaid and DuckTales weren't anywhere near as hard as Darkwing Duck. So, you know, maybe someone at Capcom decided to play a little joke on us. I don't know. But the fact that Darkwing Duck is a lot harder than a lot of the other Disney games that Capcom produced... I do find it strange, but you know what, it's okay, because Darkwing kind of has that um, Batman quality, so, you know, I figure toughen up, right, kids? It's what I did. Well, I still suck at it. <laughs> so, what about you? The music in this game goes right along with the standard that Capcom produces. Sometimes I wonder if even I have to mention the music, but I do have to give a complete review, so I will say this. The music is awesome. It always felt right in the area I was playing. Some game designers don't know how to use the right music to make it fit the atmosphere of the game that is being played. 
Capcom never had this problem from my own experience with their games. The graphics are pretty groovy, too. They are clear and detailed as far as the 8-bit NES could produce. This is one of those games where the designers use the system's capabilities instead of being lazy. As I mentioned before, Darkwing Duck can use his cape as a shield, and the details shown when he pulls it over his body is very well done. Now, it's been about 20 years since the TV show or the video game was made, but I think it would be a great remake for today. I think kids would really appreciate it. Uh, PlayStation, Wii U, Xbox, make something. I'd, I'd buy it, wouldn't you guys? Anyway, thank you for uh, watching my video review on Darkwing Duck for the NES. I'm Jatos. This is Video Game Corner. Subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please. Comment. You know, leave, let me know how I'm doing. I, you know, I can't stress it enough to comment and subscribe because I really think I'm going to have a good show eventually. It's not great now, but, you know, give me some time. I'm going to keep working at it, I promise. But um, my name's Jatos. This is Video Game Corner. Subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys next time.